Hey guys, so I'm back here with a continuation of this cap dump circuit. Second time I've had to record this one when I was recording the last one. I was almost done recording and the negative here. The alligator clip popped off and it landed right over here on my MOSFET and fried the MOSFET, fried the gauge that I had here. Stuck like that because it shorted it out. It won't happen again because I put a fuse in this one, one amp fuse. So I think it'll it'll be all right for one amp anyway without killing the gauge. But anyway, it's all hooked up now. Anyway, you can see the motor's giving her. Actually, the controls are still the same as the way it was. Actually, I haven't even adjusted this. I had this off. But it seems pretty close to where it needs to be. The motor's still in the same position. Same input. You can see it's using a bit more power because it's going faster. Like and like with these motors, like I said before, is if the voltage is closer to where uh, to where I want it here, closer to the battery voltage, the RPMs are much faster, and it'll use a little more energy. When the back EMF isn't being used or removed from the system, it, it, it blocks the input energy, which in turn slows the rotor down. So, that's a lot more complicated circuit, but I can adjust it to wherever that SCR circuit was just by changing this cap right here and put a little bigger one it would give me more of a delayed reaction where I'd be firing it at a higher voltage like right now it's firing somewhere around 35 volts thirty-six which is pretty good And I can put any size capacitor bank on here. It doesn't matter. And another thing too that happens with those SCR circuits is if you're running your motor right at the verge of where, like, you only have it at, at the minimum requirement for it to trigger. If your input voltage drops enough, then your your current that's triggering the SCR, your voltage and current is going to be too low and it won't trigger it. Whereas this one's always going to trigger, no matter how low your voltage gets. And like I said in that one of my previous videos about the voltage reduction circuit is this battery gets charged by resisting the voltage going in because this circuit here runs on 12 volts with this 12 volt regulator right here in the resistor but there's also that bridge rectifier right there those four diodes which is charging this 18 volt battery And the circuit itself pulls about 10 milliamps, which is a very small amount of power for such a good circuit. And another thing too is with these cap dumb circuits, you don't want to have too big of caps. 
you'll get more power out of a smaller pulse that happens more often than you will out of a big large one that only fires once in a while. Unless you're trying to desulfate a battery or something like that, it's you're just trying to get the power from a bit of a higher voltage into back into a lower voltage battery, right? It's like it is nice to have it at these higher voltages because it's watts you're converting, you're making watts out of those higher volts, right? It's potential. But you don't want to go too far because as you get further down the scale, it slows down on how much you're actually putting into the cops. So you got to really tune it to the motor you're using. Like I could put the the uh, like with this SCR circuit, I started with um, 440 UF or 4,400 UF. I was getting an amp or so pulse back into the battery, but it was really wasn't making the the output voltage go up very fast. And when I put the 2700 UF cap on it was a huge difference it pulsed faster another thing too is important is to fine tune your voltage and where it, where it fires which is good because like the way I have this I could just put them in series with these Zener diodes you can just add them in series like there's a 36 volt and a 6 volt in series here and you can fire at 42 volts ish and I can put two more in there in series you just have that little jumper there and take that jumper out and put two more diodes if I want or you can fine tune it to like you know I got three volt ones, I got all sorts of those diodes. And yeah, I can turn this so it, it pulses really fast. You can do that with the Zener diodes too, but you have to change the diode. Like that's pretty fast pulses. It likes that, you can see. Just by the voltage went up a bit. It's actually better to have some faster pulses than slower ones, right? Faster, smaller pulses. So now it's firing at about every 30 ish volts, 32, 30. But thanks for watching guys, appreciate it.